On August 25th, 2023, it was announced that former fourth overall pick quarterback Trey Lance would be traded to the Dallas Cowboys in exchange for a fourth round draft pick, thus bringing an end to the Trey Lance era in San Francisco. And in this video, we're going to take a look back at the rise of Trey Lance and the San Francisco 49ers and how this once great marriage fell apart so quickly. I'm Omar Q for Real Take Sports, and this is The Real Take Breakdown. Before storming into the spotlight of the NFL, Trey Lance's journey was shaped by a lineage deeply rooted in football. His father, Carlton Lance, a former cornerback for the Saskatchewan Rough Riders of the Canadian Football League, played a pivotal role in molding his early understanding of the game. Raised under the watchful guidance of his father, Lance began playing youth football as a running back and in middle school, he took his first snaps under center, assuming the position of quarterback, which would go on to define the rest of his football life. Lance found himself at Marshall High School in Minnesota, putting the athleticism that would later become a hallmark of his playing style on full display. He quickly emerged as the state's premier quarterback prospect, and his potential was undeniable. Notably, his aspirations initially pointed him towards the University of Minnesota, However, despite his readiness to commit, the university saw him as a wide receiver or defensive back, which did not align with his ambition to command the field as a quarterback. This, along with a reluctancy for most Power 5 schools to recruit him as a quarterback, led him to North Dakota State, one of the best Division I AA schools in the nation. While this meant he would be playing at only the second highest level of college football, it did guarantee him a spot on the team as a quarterback a gamble that would go on to pay off for Lance. After redshirting his freshman year, Lance made his debut for the Bison in 2019, where his impact was immediate, guiding them to an undefeated season and propelling the school to the 2023 NCAA Division I football championship game. During the season, he completed 60% of his passes, passed for over 2,700 yards and 28 touchdowns with remarkably zero interceptions. This feat had etched his name into NCAA history, setting the record for most passing attempts in a season without an interception. His contributions weren't confined to the air. Lance had over 1,100 yards rushing and 14 touchdowns on the ground, and these achievements garnered recognition across the country as Lance won the prestigious Walter Payton Award, signifying his status as the FCS Most Outstanding Offensive Player along with the Jerry Rice Award for the FCS's best freshman. While Lance was poised for another chapter of collegiate brilliance in 2020, the COVID-19 pandemic cast a shadow over the entire sports world. Despite these obstacles, Lance did make one appearance in a game that season against Central Arkansas, highlighting his versatility with two passing touchdowns and two rushing touchdowns, and unfortunately an uncharacteristic interception putting his streak to an end. However, the narrative was destined to shift again as Lance made another monumental decision, opting out of the remainder of the Bison season to focus on that year's draft and an almost guaranteed future at NFL stardom. At the same time Lance was making waves at North Dakota State, the San Francisco 49ers under Kyle Shanahan were bursting onto the scene as one of the NFL's premier teams. After his first two years as head coach were marred with injury and bad quarterback play, in 2019, Shanahan's squad put it all together, boasting one of the NFL's best teams. That year, their offense put up a staggering 479 points, which was the franchise's highest since 1998. Led by the trio of Matt Breida, Tevin Coleman, and the bursting onto the scene, Raheem Mosert, the 49ers averaged an impressive 144 yards per game on the ground, second only to the Baltimore Ravens that year. Additionally, they finished first in the NFL in rushing touchdowns with 23, third in point differential with plus 169, and while the offense balled out, the defense is where they truly shined. Among the team's defensive achievements that year, they ranked sixth in the NFL in forced turnovers that year with 27, second in total defense with 281.8 yards per game, first in passing defense with 169.2 per game, and fourth in sacks with 48. This 49ers team was historic as this was the first time in nearly two decades that the franchise had finished both top 10 in scoring and yards per game. 
At the conclusion of the regular season, the 49ers secured the number one seed in the NFC, and after dominant wins over the Vikings and the Packers in the playoffs, they earned the right to play the Kansas City Chiefs in Super Bowl 54. And what happened in that Super Bowl is a story for another day. But even though they lost in that game, the team looked poised to be a force in the NFL for years to come. However, in 2020, things fell apart pretty quickly as injuries to starting quarterback Jimmy Garoppolo and defensive stalwart Nick Bosa derailed the season with the team finishing 6-10. Many pointed this failure to capitalize on coaching, but it was clear that it wasn't just that. Remember, in a span of three years from 2018 to 2020, Garoppolo had missed 23 games due to injury. And at this point, many 49ers fans and pundits were labeling the team signal caller as injury prone and were claiming that a team as stacked as they were defensively needed to act quickly to bring in someone new to stabilize the situation and finally bring a Lombardi back to the Bay Area. Who is next year's player that no one's heard of right now that everyone should be watching at the quarterback position because everyone will be talking about him come draft time? Trey Lance, and he's at North Dakota State, and they have that history of producing quarterbacks like Carson Wentz. Uh, you have, of course, uh, talent around the quarterback. They dominate that level. Uh, there's no question he's going to put up huge numbers. He didn't throw an interception all of last year. He had 1,100 rushing yards. I mean, this kid is a dual threat like Justin Fields. He's really Justin Fields at a lower level of competition. So why shouldn't he be way up there? Now, he won't be eligible to go to the Senior Bowl in Mobile. He'll be only a third-year sophomore. We don't even know if he'll come out, Greeny. But when you watch him in this first year as a starter at North Dakota State, he was week after week. Yeah, flawless. He didn't make mistakes. I mean, zero picks. When have we ever seen that? This is obviously a program has a successful track record. They win football games. But Trey Lance really is a spectacular quarterback, and people will be hearing a lot about him because of what, where he's ranked right now in the middle of that top 25, around 15 or 16, pretty much all year. The lead up to the 2021 NFL draft was a whirlwind of anticipation, especially when it came to Trey Lance. He was part of a quarterback class that promised to reshape the league alongside high-level prospects like Trevor Lawrence, Zach Wilson, and Justin Fields. As Mel Kuyper mentioned in that clip, Lance brought a rare combination of attributes to the table. His strengths included a cannon of an arm that could launch pinpoint passes across the field and an uncanny ability to extend plays with his legs. His athleticism and poise under pressure were evident throughout his college career where he remained cool in critical moments. Many scouts even compared him to Josh Allen or fellow North Dakota State standout and former number two overall pick Carson Wentz. However, that doesn't mean there weren't areas for growth. Scouts pointed to things like his limited game experience coming from a smaller program and needing to be fine-tuned in his decision-making and overall field awareness at the NFL level. Despite these challenges, the allure of Lance's raw talent was undeniable, making him one of the most intriguing prospects in that year's draft. And with that, the stage was set for a life-altering moment as NFL teams eagerly evaluated the next potential franchise quarterback. Hey, Trey Lance. What's going on? You ready to do this thing, man? Yes, sir. Welcome, welcome to the 49ers, buddy. Thank you. So happy to add you to our family, buddy. I'm, I'm, I'm thrilled. Yeah, congratulations, man. I'm going to pass you over Coach Shanahan, okay? Awesome. Thank you. What's up, man? <laughs> What's going on, Coach? Nothing new. Are you excited? Yeah, I'm so excited, Coach. All right. You had a hunch for a while? Oh, uh, man, I didn't know, Coach. You wouldn't tell me nothing. Hey, we didn't tell anybody, man. I know. I thought I thought you could tell, though, the way you I thought you got to buy a button and turn it into them. I did, but I didn't. I, you know, I didn't know, Coach. Hey, man, it was all worth it, man. Dude, we're so pumped. We're so pumped, man. We'll get you out here tomorrow. Enjoy this night. Talk, Talk to with you. your family, man. You burned it. Um, There you saw the moment this was all leading up to. With the fourth overall pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the San Francisco 49ers selected North Dakota State prospect Trey Lance. The 49ers actually had to move up in the draft, trading three first-round picks in the process. But it was clear that they believed in him enough to do so. 
Following the draft, the Trey Lance era kicked off in San Francisco with an air of excitement. Hailed as a dynamic and versatile quarterback, Lance's entry to the NFL was accompanied by immense hope. Rocket arm and ability to move fluidly within and outside the pocket made him an intriguing prospect that the 49ers faithful believed would be the catalyst of a new era of dominance for the team. If J Jimmy's healthy, Jimmy's working his butt off, he's here doing everything. And this is going to be very hard for a rookie um, to come in and beat Jimmy Garoppolo out. He's a very good player. And that's why I like the situation that we are in. Now, we'll see where Trey's at. We'll see how he does in OTAs. Um, I love that we're getting those. I love that he's going to come here tomorrow to be able to talk to him in person. Um, but Jimmy's our quarterback right now. And Trey's going to come in here. He's going to compete. He's trying to do everything. And the day that it looks like Trey can compete with him and he's ready to go, then we We'll know that our players will see that and we won't hesitate on that. Just like I feel like we wanted at any other position. Um, but that's a big task um, to do something like that as a rookie when we're talking about someone like Jimmy. So in that clip, you saw Kyle Shanahan discuss how they weren't really sure of the timeline for Trey Lance and how it would likely be difficult for a rookie to beat out Jimmy G for the starting job. Remember, this is a guy who in 2019 took them to the NFC Championship game. So the 49ers weren't just going to move on from him outright. Lance at some point was going to have to prove himself as better than Jimmy G. And he had the opportunity to do so following an injury to Jimmy G when it was announced that he would start his first NFL game against the Cardinals. In the game, Lance did some impressive things. However, he didn't do quite enough to take the starting quarterback role away from Jimmy G as Garoppolo would return as a starter and hold on to it for the rest of the 2021 season. In the 2022 NFL season, Lance finally got his chance. He was announced as the starter after a stellar training camp in preseason with veteran Jimmy Garoppolo serving as the backup. However, Lance would quickly face adversity in the form of an untimely injury that would sideline him for the rest of the season. As he worked diligently to recover the unexpected ascent of fellow quarterback Brock Purdy, who after going 7-1 as a starter and leading the team back to the NFC Championship game, had cemented himself as a starter in the league and created great uncertainty for both Lance and the 49ers going into 2023. Lance's path to reclaiming his starting role became a challenging one as he had to navigate himself back to full health while also competing against Purdy. Lance's development, though, seemed to take a step backwards after an unimpressive training camp that saw him fall all the way to third on the depth chart behind both Brock Purdy and former first-round pick Sam Darnold, a move that seemed to be the nail in the coffin for his time in San Francisco. Trey Lance was dealt to Dallas for a fourth round pick. 49er GM John Lynch joins us. Hard day to trade the young man, huh? Yeah, really hard day. Uh, such a such a wonderful young man. Uh, you know, we took a shot and it, it didn't work out. We own that. We take accountability for it. Uh, but I think, uh, as I as I think you guys do, his story is still very much unwritten. And uh, I'm excited for Trey. Uh, Dallas stepped up and really wanted him and uh, they came after him and I think it's going to be a great landing spot for him uh, I could tell everybody it wasn't for lack of effort on Trey's part or on our part that it didn't work circumstances took hold and he struggled through injuries and this team's ready to win and you know we we like our quarterback room we like Brock Purdy a lot we like Sam Darnold and we like Brandon Allen so we wish Trey all the best in Dallas and we'll always care about that young man and admire his uh his work ethic and, and the person that he is. There you heard it. Team GM John Lynch discussing the trade in a pretty revealing and honest interview. He didn't try to sugarcoat what happened. He stated the facts. At the end of the day, this wasn't a good fit for either Lance or the team. It was unfortunate, but at some point they had to let go. And if you listen to his voice there, he didn't really sound that confident about Lance anyway. And this also leads us to another reason why the San Francisco 49ers may have been so ready to deal Lance. And that being the idea that he wasn't their first choice to begin with. Recent reports have indicated that originally when the team traded up in the first round, they did so with the intention of selecting Alabama standout Mac Jones. And here's Adam Schefter from ESPN shining some light on this news. They traded up with the idea that they loved Mac Jones. Okay, that, that when they made that trade, oh, yeah. they traded up with the idea 
that they were going to draft with the idea that they're going to draft Mac Jones while also having, I think it was six weeks to the draft, maybe, maybe a little less, a month or so to look at the other prospects. And while they looked at the other prospects, they fell in love with the intangibles that Trey Lance demonstrated. He did testing and tested off the charts in terms of intelligence. They brought him in the building. The guy was ultra impressive. And even though they traded up with the idea of picking Mac Jones while doing their work, they became enamored with this guy and the upside that he had. And I think they felt like if they take Mac Jones, then their offense, which many teams run versions of and they copy what they do, will continue to be duplicated, but it would be harder to duplicate what they do with a guy like Trey Lance, who freelances and plays spontaneous football the way he does. And so in the end, they went for the guy with the bigger upside, a guy that had great intangibles, and they went for Trey Lance. But I'm telling you, when they made the deal, the motivation initially was Mac Jones. Looking back at his limited time in San Francisco, Lance wasn't particularly bad in his starts. He just wasn't impressive enough or healthy enough to keep his job. And at the end of the day, the success of Brock Purdy sealed his fate. Lance was no longer the guy that San Francisco needed, and it was just time to move on. So now the question remains, what's next for Trey Lance? Well, immediately, it looks like he's going to be the backup quarterback for the Dallas Cowboys behind Dak Prescott. But barring injury, don't expect Lance to see much playing time at all. As Dallas recently signed Prescott to a very lucrative four-year contract extension back in 2021. Dallas, though, could offer Lance an opportunity that wasn't really available to him in San Francisco. A chance to take a step back and wait without the pressure all being on him. In San Francisco, Lance had to be the guy, but in Dallas, or anywhere else for that matter, he only needs to be a guy. And that doesn't mean that he can't be a starter again in the NFL, or a good one at that. But it won't happen overnight, and it likely will take a quarterback needy team taking a chance on him to do it. But in the end, we'll just have to wait and see what happens. I hope you guys like this video. Trey Lance's career is definitely one that we're all going to be keeping an eye on for years to come. But I want to hear from you. What do you guys think went wrong in San Francisco? Could the 49ers have actually kept Lance and made use of his athletic prowess? Or were they just destined to part ways the entire time? Let me know in the comments section below if you haven't already done so. Do me a favor, hit that like button, subscribe, hit that notification bell, and let me know what topic you guys want me to cover in a future video. Until next time, be happy, be healthy, and as always, keep it real.